It's that time again. Here we have a selection of some of the best everyday carry and travel gear that has found its way to the channel in the last few weeks. Let's see what we've got. Let's start with a new knife from James Brand and this is the Ellis Slim and is the thinnest full length knife they do and as someone who is always keen to minimise weight and bulk this one really appeals. Now the original Ellis looks pretty much the same but it is as you can see quite a bit thicker and that's because it has in here this great pair of scissors and I really like this knife but I have to say this slim just feels right in the hand. It is slim at just eight millimeters thick and light at 50 grams and I really like the understated simple but functional design. The drop point blade, which is 67 millimeters in length or 2.6 inches, uses a Sandvik 12C27 steel, which is a very tough and capable all round blade steel. And we have here a non lock in slip joint mechanism with an elongated nail nick requiring two handed opening so at this size it's legal to carry in most parts of the world including the UK. We also have a strong back spring and also a half stop for added safety and on the back we have a very nice wire deep carry pocket clip which works really well and at the end here we have something which James Brand called the all things scraper stroke large flathead screwdriver stroke pry bar which can also be used to attach the knife to a lanyard or a key ring. In terms of options, we have this straight bladed version here in steel with black G10 grippy scales, or you can elect for aluminium scales in canary orange. And both of these will set you back around 99 pounds or dollars. And then there's also a version with a partial serrated blade, which can help when cutting fibrous materials, but can hinder in other ways. And this version is only available at the time of filming with tan G10 scales and black steel, which also happens to look very nice, but expect to pay 10 pounds or dollars more for this version. And all in all, this is a really practical and pocket friendly lightweight knife. This is the bolt action pen from Bastion and the arrival was timely as I lost my very nice bolt action pen from Big Idea Design on my recent trip to Thailand. So this has been my daily driver for the last couple of weeks and I really like it. The quality and finish is really excellent and you have a wide choice of materials and finishes. It's five and a quarter inches in length and around half an inch in diameter. And this one here is made from raw grade five type titanium which is my favorite finish out of all the options and it benefits from a lower weight at under 50 grams or 1.7 ounces than say the stainless steel version which at 80 grams is actually quite heavy. As you can see here the walls of the pen are actually quite thick contributing to that weight but also adds something really nice to the overall look. In fact, I love the simple styling of this pen, proving the old adage that less is often more when it comes to good design. What did confuse me for a while is how to access the refill. There seems to be no way in. Then you realize that the front screws off, but the machining is so good, the join is completely hidden. And this is one of the reasons why the design looks so clean. The bolt action is addictive if rather noisy as the spring tension is quite high. The pen clip is perfect, rock solid with good strength and tension. And if I put it on here where I normally have it on my notebook, you can see here that it's not going anywhere. It uses a readily available classic Parker type G2 refill of which there's plenty of choice and you get a spare refill included in the box along with this protective felt sleeve. As for the price, it starts around 50 pounds or dollars and goes up to around 80 for this titanium version. And as far as premium pens go, this is actually great value in my book as the quality on offer here is really nice. And as usual, if you want to know more about any item featured, I'll put links in the description down below. Just click on where it says more or show more. Okay, this is rather an unusual one and I've included this because music is part of many people's everyday carry, including mine. This tiny gadget is the Go Blue DAC. Now a DAC is a digital to analog converter 
and a DAC is needed because all sounds entering the ear are in an analog waveform, whereas music is generally stored and delivered or streamed in a digital form, hence the need for the conversion. Your phone has a DAC built in, as do your wireless earphones or headphones, but like everything, there's always something better out there. And a separate DAC like this one uses high-end components that are engineered to be in a different league. So this is all about getting the most out of your music. More quality, more detail, a wider sound stage, more volume because this is also an amplifier and therefore more listening pleasure. Now, if you're out for a jog with your earphones, then this is not what you need. But if you enjoy taking time out to really listen to your music, then a DAC like this can transform the listening experience. But you need to factor in a couple of other things too. In order to get the benefit, you need a high bitrate music source. I use Amazon's Music Unlimited service, which offers HD and Ultra HD lossless streaming. And then you've got something like Tidal, who are one of the first high-res music streaming providers. You also need good quality wired headphones, which you plug directly into the Go Blue. And I use some nice B&W P7 headphones, which I've had for quite a while. The Go Blue, as you can see, is tiny and it is beautifully designed. And whilst it can be connected to the music source using USB-C, which is also used for charging, the real benefit here is the convenience of using Bluetooth. So you can be remote from the music source. And I have to say it works brilliantly and it sounds fantastic. Now, my previous setup required the use of a lightning cable directly into the phone and then a USB-A adapter like this one here. And that's my old Dragonfly DAC. And then I would plug my headphones into here like that. And then I would be effectively tied to the phone. With this setup, all I need to do is to plug the headphones directly into the Go Blue and I'm good to go. And this will now stream music from my phone or say laptop or tablet and I can roam free of the music source and it sounds better too. You control the volume from here with this rotary knob and that works really well. It's also got a button in the middle you can press to pause, play and skip. And in here we also have a microphone so you can use your voice assistant or you can even make a call although you don't actually hear your own voice in the headphones if you use it for that. Has a couple of increased bass modes. You have a three and a half millimeter output here and also a 4.4 millimeter Pentacon output which you'll appreciate if you know what that is. And you get 10 hours of battery life. As for the weight, it weighs just 28 grams or an ounce and it fits in the fifth pocket of your jeans and it makes you realize just how great your music can sound. As for the price, this will set you back around 180 pounds or dollars. And if you love your music, you're going to love this too. Wuben have been making some great flashlights recently and this one is no exception. This is the Falcon X1 and follows their new design theme we have already seen in the X0 and also in the very impressive X2, both of which have already been reviewed on this channel. This one, as you can see though, is much bigger and the maximum output with this light is a very impressive 12,000 lumens with a quoted range of 300 meters or 985 feet. Although don't forget that that translates to a practical range of more like 75 meters. And if you want to know why that is, check out the video linked here. The design here is futuristic and I'm a big fan of that and the weight I would describe as heavy coming in at 380 grams or 13 ounces but that means it feels really well made and what you would call heavy duty. As for the construction it's made from what appears to be very thick walled aircraft grade anodized aluminium and as a size reference here it is alongside my iPhone 13 Pro. There are three high quality XHP 70.2 LEDs here which are optimized for flood over beam and have a color temperature of 6000 Kelvin which is not super white but not excessively warm either and is actually a pretty good balance. And if we look at the chart we can see the detail of the light levels and run times and feel free to pause this here but in a nutshell we have an eco mode at 20 lumens 
which is shown to have a duration of 220 hours, which should get you home even if you are very lost. We also have a very usable 400 lumens, which should last 14 hours, and a 1000 lumens, which should run for five and a half hours. And then we have 2600 lumens for two hours. And then we have that turbo level, which is 12,000 lumens and is shown to drop down after one minute of runtime, which is not unexpected. And then it should continue to run at 3000 lumens for the next 1.7 hours. You also have a strobe mode to distract what might be a potential attacker or perhaps an unfriendly dog and also an SOS mode to signal for help. Operation is very intuitive and the single switch can give you direct access to eco mode, the last used light level, turbo, and then back again, and also strobe. And that is just what you would want. There's also a lockout mode, which requires four rapid presses and a built-in fan to keep the light cool when things start to run hot. And with an IP55 rating, this light can get seriously wet, but it should not be submerged. In here, we have two two 21700 batteries, which explains the long run times, but they are not user replaceable. And for many, that will be a deal breaker. We have USB-C charging, which whilst expected these days is still good to see. And we have a belt pouch included, which for once I actually really like, and that's good to see because this thing is too heavy for a belt clip, which it doesn't have, or for a lanyard which it does. Finally, it comes in anodized black, or you can also choose micro arc oxidization white, which theoretically should be harder wearing. This thing should retail at around 200 pounds or dollars, but I have seen some offers about. All in all, if you can cope with the non-replaceable batteries, the X1 is a great pocket-sized all-round flashlight. As some of you will know, Quadlock is my preference for mounting my phone in my car and on my mountain bike and also on my desk. And I've been using Quadlock for several years now. So I was very happy when Quadlock sent me one of their newest innovations. And this is it, the Quadlock selfie stick. Nicely made as we've come to expect from Quadlock from glass filled nylon and black stainless steel and it weighs just 200 grams or seven ounces. It's pocket sized as you can see when it's folded and fully extends to 462 millimeters which is 18 inches using this chunky telescopic pole. We have a rubberized grip on the handle here and a very effective lanyard wrist strap. The double articulation here allows for 270 degrees of movement and is tight and grippy, but doesn't require tools or thumb screws to keep it that way. And if all that wasn't enough, the handle opens up to become a very stable tripod, which is great for selfies, group photos, nighttime shots, and time-lapse. In addition, the feet of the tripod are also rubberized for a little bit more grip. The attachment requires the use of the quadlock phone case and this will work with all versions as it uses the original twist and lock mechanism, which is gonna be more secure than the more recent magnetic system. So both old and new cases will work with this selfie stick. When in place, the phone feels super secure and there's no danger of it letting go of your precious phone. As for the price, this is around 43 pounds or $50, which I think is pretty good when you factor in the great design and quality and the compact size and functionality, making this a great addition to the already excellent Quadlock ecosystem. I have here a tech pouch from a company called Compagnon. At least I think that's how you pronounce it. They're based in Germany and they make bags and backpacks with it seems an emphasis on camera gear. Now, until they got in touch, I'd not heard of them, but I have to say this pouch is something else when it comes to quality, detail and organization. So this is for all your tech gear and I expect also your camera accessories, but it could of course be for anything. And with this strap on here, it could even become your everyday carry bag. Although personally, I prefer a sling design. The strap incidentally has these aluminium carabiners and also this quick release buckle. 
The main face material used here is X-Pack, which is lightweight and extremely tough and waterproof. And the rest of the bag uses a ballistic 1650 denier nylon, which is also extremely tough and waterproof. And overall, this bag weighs in at 230 grams or eight ounces. And if I quickly show you around the bag, you'll get a feel for the effort and detail that's gone into this. There's no zip pockets on the front and the back, but we do have two zips here, both waterproof AquaGuard zippers from YKK with these nice zipper pulls that give access to two compartments in this bag. Let's have a look at the first one. And you can see there's a lot going on in here. We've got a mesh pocket, which has got quite a lot of volume to it. Then we've got a space to put things. And then we've got this stretchy pocket here slung in the middle with two openings and we've got a little bit more space and then we've got a flat pocket here for flatter items or maybe some paperwork and then we've got a key loop there and also we've got a cable pass through there and that's in case you want to put maybe a power bank in one side and whatever you're charging in the other you can pass the cable through there then if we look at the other side We've got a lot going on here as well. We've got a pen loop here, here, and here. We've got a pocket here. We've got a zip pocket here, which is split into two. Then on this side, we've got three stretchy mesh type pockets. And then we've got six elasticated loops. So loads of organization in here. On the back here, we've got two Hyperlon belt loops, which are held in place with heavy duty bar tack stitching. And then on the bottom of the bag, we've got a carry strap, again, made from Hyperlon with heavy duty stitching and some very subtle branding on the bottom of the bag. Available in black only, the price for this is 79 euros or $99, which is a similar price to the market leading peak design tech pouch, although the Compagnon here is a bit smaller, or should I say more compact. Overall, there is loads of organization in here with great quality and the use of great materials. And if you like the look of this, you won't be disappointed. When it comes to power banks, nothing beats the Shargeek Storm 2 in looks in my view. I just love this transparent body with these aluminium end caps and this super clear mini color screen, which gives you live monitoring of all input and output sockets, as well as detailed information about the battery status. The Storm 2 has four ports, two USB-C ports, one of which is rated at 100 watts and is both input and output. Then we have an 18 watt USB-A port and a 75 watt rather old school round DC input and output port. This supports just about all fast charging protocols so it can charge your devices in the fastest possible time. The batteries in here can also be fast charged themselves and that takes around an hour and a half. The power in here comes from eight quality Samsung lithium ion batteries and they provide a combined capacity of 25,600 milliamp hour which is just inside the maximum 27,000 milliamp hour that you can legally carry on a flight. So if you're looking for the largest power bank when traveling by air, this would be ideal. Incidentally, power banks must be carried in hand luggage on a flight these days and must be removed from your luggage when going through security. So this will charge three devices simultaneously and there are lots of protections to prevent things like overheating and short circuits and much more. And the capacity should charge an iPhone, say, around seven times and a MacBook roughly twice and an iPad around three times, give or take. Now, I really like this power bank and it makes such a nice change from the usual black bricks. In an ideal world, though, I would prefer another USB-A here and I'm not sure how useful the DC socket is these days, but I do like the screen and the max flight capacity, which makes it a great option for digital nomads. It comes with this yellow USB-C to C cable and also this cloth pouch, and the price is around $220.
Next up, we have a couple of wallets from Exeter. Now, Exeter have been around for a few years and focus on wallets and everyday carry accessories. And these wallets are for those who place an emphasis on carrying cards, as it has an ingenious mechanism which allows you to very quickly identify and access the card you want. Just press this button here at the bottom of the wallet and the cards pop up nicely separated out. You then select the one you want and well, it's that easy. The mechanism takes six flat cards, although if you have cards with raised text or digits, that does rob a bit of space in here. So if I try it with three cards that have raised digits, I can now only fit in two flat cards. The mechanism still seems to work okay though, even if it doesn't fan the cards out quite as precisely. With this aluminium wallet, which I should point out looks and feels really well made, you also get this aluminium plate held in place with this rubber bungee and that is to allow you to store another six cards so they go in here and they can be pushed up from the bottom and fanned out old school style. The bungee strap also doubles up as a cash strap to hold some folded notes. The colour I have of this one here is graphite and there are a total of 13 colours to choose from. Here is another option in black which again looks very nice and this one has a modified aluminium plate and also modified bungee so it can accommodate an Apple AirTag which slides in here and that sits in there alongside the extra cards that can slide under there. It's a neat implementation, but you can't get away from the form factor of the AirTag, which is not very pocket friendly when stuck to the side of a wallet. For a wallet, I would always choose a credit card tracker like the Chipolo Spot that is licensed to use Apple Find My, so you get the benefit of an AirTag in the size of a credit card. Finally, we have a, another version of the extra wallet and this one's called the Parliament and it wraps the whole thing in Nappa leather. So you have the mechanism combined with the bifold experience found in a traditional wallet. And this one I'm not too excited about because this is now quite bulky and the three slots here you gain with the bifold don't really, in my view, compensate for the loss of the aluminium plate found on the previous model, which can take six additional cards. Also, the mechanism and cash strap are permanently fixed in here and can't be removed or replaced. So if you carry mainly cards and need to access, say, up to six of them quickly and easily, then this could be a great option, particularly, in my view, the aluminium version. And as for the price, you're talking around the £60 or dollar mark, going up to around 100 And if you want to see some more haul videos, then just click on this link right here. So that's all we have for this one. I hope that's been interesting. Thank you as always for watching and I hope you can join me for the next one.